Dragon's Dogma 2 is a huge game with tons of content for you to explore and enjoy. However, despite how much I like the game, I do believe that there are some aspects that could be improved and as such, in today's video I will be showing you what I believe to be the best mods for Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm going to be focusing on quality of life mods that are more so going to improve your overall gameplay experience with Dragon's Dogma 2, rather than focusing on mods that are going to change the way some weapons look or make the female characters have bigger chests. But of course, if you are looking for that kind of mod, I'm sure that you will be able to find it with ease. With that being said, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and let's get started. Now the first mod of this video is going to be Skill Description, which, as the name implies, is going to change the description of many of the skills in the game to give you a lot more detail as opposed to the flavor text that you find in a lot of these skill descriptions. So with this mod you'll be able to know exactly just how much damage each of the skills do, how long does a certain buff last and how much stamina you need to use that skill. And this mod goes perfectly in hand with the following mod which is Better Item Description, which again is going to replace the flavor text for some of these items with a much more accurate and detailed description as to what exactly they do. With for example the game now telling you that a fine roborant is going to restore 900 stamina instead of just telling you that it will recover an immense amount of stamina. And these same descriptions are going to extend to weapons and rings for example. So for example the Ring of Benevolence, which in the original Dragon's Dogma 2 would tell you that the wearer is going to slowly recover health over time, after a large loss of health that is. With this mod the game will now tell you that you will heal for 3 seconds whenever you take damage over 25% of your max HP. And you will even get these same detailed descriptions for your augments which I think is very useful because by just reading the description of some of these augments a lot of them are going to come across as being very useful when in actuality they are a lot less effective. A lot of these augments like lethality for example come across as being very powerful but when you actually get into the numbers you see that it only ends up being a very minor buff and as it turns out it may just be an augment that is not worth running. I personally am the type of player that likes to be as informed as possible whenever I'm creating my own character and trying to make their build and this mod is perfect for that so I highly recommend it to everyone. Now the next mod on the list is going to be something that a lot of players have been asking for and that is multiple save files. There are a couple of save managers that have been created for Dragon's Dogma 2 that will keep track of your saves, letting you change the name of the save files determining which one is the active, but if you are someone that wants to start over a new playthrough but you don't want to delete your original save file, then with these two save managers you would be able to keep everything in order. Now of course I am aware that you are able to back up your saves before deleting them, but I find that these save managers are very practical and easy to use, and so I believe that it is something that I should recommend to you guys. Now when you are playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and especially in towns, you're going to end up running into a lot of NPCs, and a lot of them are going to have a lot of things to say. And with those bubble speeches taking up such a large portion of the screen, it can get annoying very easily. And so the next mod on the list is going to aim to fix that problem for you. The name is quite simply Disable Bubble Speech and as the name implies, it is quite simply going to remove the small text above an NPC whenever they speak. You are able to disable this in the actual game without installing the mod but if you want to do this, you will need to disable the game's subtitles. And personally I like having them, so I find that this very minor mod can actually have a pretty nice improvement on the overall gameplay experience. Now another annoyance that I have with Dragon's Dogma 2 is the fact that whenever you go to the highest upgrade level of any weapon or armor piece in the entire game, when you upgrade these pieces of equipment with Dragon Forge, they end up getting a texture on top that doesn't look very good. I don't know who at Capcom thought that this was a good idea, but either way, I don't like the way it looks on most of the weapons and armor. And especially if you download the visual weapon or armor mod, this is going to look absolutely horrendous. But thankfully there is the mod Nearly Hide Wormfire Upgrade, which aims to fix that problem, at least for the most part, making the dragon skill texture on their weapons not as visible and annoying. Now the following mod can somewhat be considered cheating, but personally I view it as a way to address the game's lack of variety when it comes to endgame gear. You see, whenever you reach the endgame of Dragon's Dogma 2, it becomes very obvious what exactly are the best weapons and armor for you to use. This lack of variety for endgame gear was also a problem in Dragon's Dogma 1, although it was somewhat addressed by the Bitter Black Isle. 
That being said, even before Dragon's Dogma 2 released, we saw that the director Idiake Tsuno even went on to say that the reason why they ended up removing a couple of gear slots from your equipment was because they were aiming to give us more variety by the time we reached the endgame of Dragon's Dogma 2. But as it turns out, the best gear that you can get, apart from a couple of exceptions, are obtained by trading worm life crystals at the Dragon Forged. And so having a one-stop shop for the best gear in the game kinda makes the rest of the gear feel somewhat pointless unless you want to give up some of these stats to get some better visuals. So if you like the aesthetic of some weapons or armor sets, you would be giving up on some stats to be able to use it. Now the following mod is Endgame Stats for all Dragonforged equipment, and as the name would tell you, it quite simply is going to raise the equipment stats to be on par with the best slot in that category. But it's not going to do that outright, you will need to upgrade your weapons or armor to Dragonforged to be able to get that effect. And so you still end up having some of that requirement to be able to enjoy your endgame gear, except that now you're not going to be as limited for options when it comes to having gear that looks not only good but also is powerful. Powerful. Now of course upgrading early game equipment is a lot easier than doing the same with some of the end game equipment, so to balance that fact the mod author has actually made it so that it's going to cost you worm life crystals to be able to upgrade some of your early game equipment, so that there is still some balance and some challenge when it comes to getting some powerful gear. I personally like this mod a lot, as someone that likes to have powerful characters, but also wants their characters to look good without having the issue of an endgame goblin going up to your character and stun locking them to death because you simply don't have good equipment. However, if you simply want an easier alternative, then there is the transmog mod which quite simply allows you to put on the appearance of a different piece of gear on top of the one you're using. I know a lot of players were asking for some sort of layered armor system, and sadly there is nothing like it in the game, but at the very least you have the option to use this mod. And since we are on this topic, I should also mention that there is a mod that allows you to hide your helmet while still keeping its stats and effects. I don't know why Capcom doesn't give you the option to hide your helmets, but hey, now we have a mod that lets you do that. Now one small thing that happens to me every now and then is when I try to use a fairy stone but it ends up failing because I didn't notice that there was some sort of ceiling, or whenever you are in back battle there is some sort of tent above you that you can't even spot that just ends up blocking your fairy stone. Well, with the mod Fairy Stone under roof, use it anywhere, you will quite simply be able to use your Fairy Stones anywhere without any issues. It's a very minor thing, but it may save you a headache here and there. And of course, I would be remiss to not include the mod that adds back the title theme of the very first game, the absolute banger that is Dangan into free. I know a lot of fans were sad to see that this music didn't make it back to Dragon's Dogma 2, not even with the DLC music back, but with this mod you'll be able to add it right back. And man, is it as good as ever. There's a lot of very good mods right now for Dragon's Dogma 2, and as time passes I'm sure that we'll be getting even more mods, and who knows, maybe sometime in the future someone will manage to add actual multiplayer into this game. So let me know if you guys want to see more videos where I cover mods for Dragon's Dogma 2. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting!